Greetings and felicitations. My name is Robert Paul Wieland and I would like to welcome you and thank you for watching this video. This video is dedicated to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now this video is also a response to Dr. White's response to Dr. Gibbs' views concerning uh, the King James only controversy. Now I want you to know that I do not believe what Dr. Gibbs believes concerning the King James Bible. I do not believe that the King James Version is inerrant or infallible or that it is the final authority in all matters concerning faith and life. With that in mind, um, I have watched Dr. White's videos uh, with, with great interest and I have found uh, some problematic things that he has said in those videos and I would like to address them. So even though this video is going to be negative in nature, I want it more to be like a handshake across the internet. Um, I hold Dr. White in the highest of esteem. I believe he's a good Christian man, a scholar, and I myself have benefited from his books, The Potter's Freedom, uh, The Forgotten Trinity, as well as his debates with Muslims and Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and Harold Camping, and I believe he has done a lot of positive good for the church. The uh, problems that I have is with his, uh, or I should say, the modern uh, textual criticism view that he, ha he has embraced. So even I don't have much time in this, uh, in this video, so let's go and take a look at a problem, or at least a part of what I think is the problem concerning uh, his views and those who follow him, their views on textual criticism. So let's take a look at what he says. Okay, that's the first error we encounter in uh, Dr. Gibbs' presentation. It's untrue because it's so simplistic. Uh, you, can, you can simplify things and say, well, there's, there's a major difference between what scholars call the Alexandrian text and what scholars would call the Byzantine text. But that is so simplistic that it leads to gross inconsistency and error. Let me illustrate. First of all, uh, everybody knows, in fact, it's interesting, uh, Sam Gipp and King James Only Advocates are very quick to point out that Alexandrian manuscripts have thousands of differences between them, and that is true. That's because it's not all just one line of manuscripts. You see, the Alexandrian manuscripts, which are the oldest manuscripts we have, and as we find older and older texts, they all are Alexandrian in form, uh, these manuscripts are not just one line where they're all copies of each other. It is an entire series of lines. Because remember, in the early church, you had tremendous persecution against Christians. And there was often persecution against Christians in Egypt, just as in other parts of the Roman Empire at that point in time. Well, that's the first part of uh, Dr. White's presentation that I would like to take a look at. Dr. White says a lot of good things in this part of his presentation. Uh, one of them is that he points out that Dr. Gibbs is inconsistent and in error. And I think that throughout his whole video series here, that Dr. White does an excellent job in pointing out Dr. Gibbs' inconsistency and error. Dr. Gibbs is inconsistent and in error in his views concerning the inspiration of the King James Version. And uh, another good part of Dr. White's presentation here is when he talks about the manuscript traditions. Um, within the Byzantine manuscript we have 5,000 plus manuscripts uh, that are Byzantine in nature and it's not just one Bible but all of these manuscripts have differences between them and the Alexandrian tradition we have uh, half a dozen manuscripts which are the older manuscripts um, that, uh, that comprise the Alexandrian family of manuscripts. There's a family resemblance within these manuscript traditions and that's why we can put them into those particular um, families, those text types. So textual criticism is a very important subject. What we're doing is we're taking all of these manuscripts and we're coming and we're condensing them and we're collating them into a, into a uh, version like the Texas Receptus or the Nessel Island or Tregellus or, or um, Tischendorf's or, um, or any of the other uh, uh, text critical uh, versions that uh, you find within the Alexandrian tradition. Um, 
So Dr. White is good in pointing that out, and I think he's right. The problematic aspect that I would like to address, and I don't have much time, so we'll have to make this uh, brief, is what Dr. White says here. You see the Alexandrian manuscripts, which are the older manuscripts we have, and as we find older and older texts, they are all Alexandrian in form. Um, he's right about that. Uh, when we are looking at the physical texts, um, the Alexandrian uh, family of manuscripts is are older physically. However, um, scholars have uh, been looking at the witnesses at the Alexandrian manuscripts, and what they're finding is they're finding Byzantine readings in the Alexandrian older manuscripts, and this is leading scholars to uh, say that the Byzantine readings, the Byzantine text tradition, is as old as the Alexandrian tradition. Now this might come as a surprise to some of the followers of uh, Dr. White, though I don't think that Dr. White would be surprised at this because later on he talks about a graying of the manuscripts, that there is a, uh, is a graying there. And what that graying is, is that there are Byzantine readings being found in the older texts which has led scholars to believe that even though we don't have physical copies that are as old as the in the Byzantine tradition as old as the Alexandrian ones what we do have are readings that go back to the second century way before the Lucian recension so let's take a look at what these scholars are saying because again I don't have that much time and uh, we'll see what they say Dr. Bruce Metzger writes, During the past decade, several papyri have come to light which tend to increase one's uneasiness over Hort's reluctance to acknowledge the possibility that an ancient reading may have been preserved in the Antiochian or Byzantine text, even though it be absent from all the great unsealed man manuscripts. Since the discovery of the Chester Beatty papyri, particularly P45 and P46, and the Bodmer papyrus II, P66, Proof is available that occasionally the later Byzantine text preserves a reading that dates from the 2nd or 3rd century and for which there had been no other early witness. A few examples, selected from a large number, will serve to illustrate this changed situation in the textual evaluation of the New Testament. Dr. Metzger then goes through several of these examples. He then continues, Though this list could be expanded, Enough examples have been cited to suggest that some of the roots of the Antiochian or Byzantine text go back to a very early date, antedating Lucian by several generations. It does not follow, of course, that the Texas Receptus should be rehabilitated in block, or even that in the examples cited above, the Antiochian text is necessarily the original text. The lesson to be drawn from such evidence, however, is that the general neglect of the Antiochian readings, which has been so common among many textual critics, is quite unjustified. Dr. Gunther Zunz writes, To sum up, a number of Byzantine readings, most of them genuine, which previously were discarded as late, are anticipated by P46. Our inquiry has confirmed that what was anyhow probable enough. The Byzantines did not hit upon these readings by conjecture or independent error. They reproduced an older tradition. The existence of this tradition was, in several cases, borne out by some versions or patristic quotations. But where such evidence is not forthcoming, the inference proved no less certain. How then, so one is tempted to go on asking, where no Chester Beatty papyrus happened to vouch for an early existence of a Byzantine reading. Are all Byzantine readings ancient? In the cognate case of the Homeric tradition, G. Pasquale answers the same question in the affirmative, and, indeed, it seems to me unlikely that the Byzantine er editors ever altered the text without manuscript evidence. Uh, he then later goes on and says, We are not going to resume the hopeless fight of Dean Burgeon, the Byzantine is the latest text, and it is the both natural and evident that it contains the largest proportion of corruptions. Most of the specially Byzantine readings rule themselves out of court without ado. 
the chance that, even so, they are far older than the manuscripts which attest them is nonetheless great. The testimony of a hostile witness in a court of law carries with it more weight than that of a friendly witness. And here we have two scholars who can in no fashion be considered King James onlyists and are in fact hostile to the King James and the Byzantine tradition. These men are saying that the tradition, the readings of the Byzantine manuscripts go as ancient as the Alexandrian manuscripts. They go back to the second century. Now what they're not saying is that the physical texts that we have are as ancient as the Alexandrian. When it comes to the physical texts, the Alexandrian manuscripts are older than the Byzantine. What they are saying, and what is more important in textual critical matters, is that the readings of the Byzantine manuscripts are on an equal par when it comes to ancientness as the readings in the Alexandrian tradition. This comes as a conundrum to those who are follow the modern textual views concerning it, because central to the modern views is exactly what Dr. White is saying here, that the older manuscripts are more important because they are older. But since the Byzantine readings are as old as the older manuscripts, then the Byzantine readings carry with it the same ancient weight as the Alexandrian manuscripts. Now, Dr. Zunz points out something very interesting in this passage, in that we don't even need P45, P46, or P66 to prove the ancientness of the readings of the Byzantine manuscripts. The patristic sightings in, of the Byzantine uh, text, uh, as well as the ancient versions, such as the Peshitta and the Vetus Italia, the old Latin versions, uh, all testify to the ancientness of the Byzantine readings. And these, th these facts have been promoted by Dean Bergen, a Scrivener, by uh, all the, uh, well, most of the, what I would call the, uh, the Byzantine uh, priority men, not the King James only types. So this doesn't come as a surprise to Dr. White, but it may come as a surprise to those who follow him that the Byzantine readings are as ancient as the Alexandrian readings. Because later on in his presentation, Dr. White will talk about a graying of the areas. And this graying of the manuscript evidence is that there are Byzantine readings in the Alexandrian uh, manuscripts, to the extent that some scholars are saying that Alexandrian copyists actually have a Byzantine manuscript in front of them and are changing it from the alpha, from the beta, from the Byzantine to the beta to the Alexandrian forms. Now all of this, all of these quotes as well as many more are documented in Harry Sturtz's book, The Byzantine Manuscripts and New Testament Textual Criticism. He does an excellent job in showing the ancientness of the Byzantine texts. Time does not allow me to go any further but to point out that even though Doc, Dr. Sturtz is, holds the ancientness of the Byzantine manuscripts, he is not a King James onlyist by any stretch of the imagination either. Uh, Dr. Sturtz's view is that the Byzantine manuscripts are an independent witness, and we'll look at that hopefully in another video. But here at this point, the only thing I would like to show that is problematic in Dr. White's presentation is that the Alexandrian readings are not as old as the Byzantine readings. With that in mind, I would like to thank you again for watching this video, and may God bless you and keep you in all things, in Christ and for Christ alone.